Okay, so things are starting to heat up at Eagles practice. Jalen Carter in Tyler Steen's face beefing and they had to be separated. Plus, CJ Garner Johnson called out Anaya Smith to his face and Quinion Mitchell locked up Devontae Smith. But that's not all. Nolan Smith playing off ball linebacker and wearing the green dot. Plus, you got to hear what happened when Milton Williams went one on one with Landon Dickerson. But first, we got breaking news as I was recording this video. Ian Rappaport just tweeted, sources, Hassan Reddick has requested a trade from the Jets. That is crazy. Remember, Hassan Reddick still got one year left on his deal that we gave him when we traded him to the Jets for a third-round pick that could turn to a second if he played certain amount of snaps. I guess the Jets and him couldn't come together and get a price tag that makes sense, and so he wants out. People still think that the Eagles need defensive line help. Could this be the ultimate Howie Roseman move? We got the cap space. If Hassan did give a little discount for any team, it would be his hometown team, the Eagles. Could we see Howie Roseman get Hassan Reddick back? I need to hear y'all thoughts on that in the comment section. What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Tall Podcast. Be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And turn on that notification bell so you don't miss the videos. So the Philadelphia Eagles do sign a safety from the Broncos, but it was the wrong safety. Justin Simmons still out there as a free agent, but the Eagles decide to bring in Caden Stern, who once upon a time was a fifth round pick to the Denver Broncos when Fangio was there. This is what he said about him. Yeah, he was a good player. Um, moved well, had good instincts, good ball skills, had a good feel for the game. Uh, we just need to see where he's at physically. He's only played five games in the last two years, I believe. Um, I don't think, you know, I don't believe you'll see him out here on the practice field at least for a week or so. So we need to see where he is physically, how he's moving around, and then go from there. But in his rookie year, he was forced to play a decent amount due to some injuries over there in Denver, and he played pretty good. Now, he's only been in the NFL for three years. And he played 21 games, which he started five of them. But he does have 49 combined tackles, two tackles for loss, two sacks, four interceptions, and nine passes defended in that short time. Plus, anybody who picks off Dak Prescott is more than welcome to join the Eagles. Moving on to this picture I saw from Dave Spadaro on his Instagram. It's the Eagles helmets after the Ravens game. Two things caught my eye. One, we see Jeremiah Trotter Jr.'s helmet there. And it's cool that the Eagles let him wear the green dot in his first game as a rookie to see how he can handle it. But the main thing that caught my eye was Nolan Smith was wearing the green dot too. I never really seen an edge rusher wear a green dot. However, in the Ravens game, he did play off ball linebacker a lot. But I did find it interesting that he had a green dot on his helmet. I'm going to pay attention to that to see how that plays out going forward. Real quick, though, before we get to day 11 training camp and all the craziness, I mean craziness that happened, we're doing a jersey giveaway for August 18th. Every Super Chat dollar gets you an entry for a jersey of your choice. This is for the live streams, but I'm extending it to this video. Here's how to enter. Like the video. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel with the notification bell hit and go to the comment section and type bleed green and you will be entered in the jersey giveaway on august 18th any color any player of your choice shout out to jimmy kemsky of the philly voice for these updates day 11 got crazy there was some fun action and offensive line slash defensive line 101s today bryce huff had a really nice looking inside spin against lane johnson he exploded out of his stance and charged up the field without any wasted motion he planted his foot in the ground, spun inside, kept his balance, and continued to rush at top speed. Unfortunately for Huff, Johnson cut him off, and his rush went nowhere. It must be frustrating to be an edge rusher facing Johnson every single day. Milton Williams has always had great athleticism, but his quickness feels like it's at another level this year. He dusted, and I repeat, dusted Landon Dickerson in their matchup prior to practice. Fangio, interestingly, identified Williams as a guy who can also play nose tackle in relief of Jordan Davis. Plus, remember, they talked about Milton Williams playing some defensive end this year in certain packages alongside of Jalen Carter. So Milton Williams is going to have a breakout year. I mean, he believes so too, but he also talks highly of a Jomo. One guy on the team to have a big season. Other than me? Nah. Uh, one guy on the team to have a big season. Morrow. Okay, why is that? Morrow Jomo. He 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 bring it. 
he 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 know what he uh, finally he gonna get the opportunity, and uh, now nah, he ready, he ready, he working hard every day, asking questions in meetings. No, he in tune. He he gonna be ready. The highlight of the one on one period was when Jalen Carter and Tyler Steen had words and had to be separated. Connor Barwin, who helps run the one on one drill, stepped in between Carter and Steen. Carter swatted Barwin's hand down. Their join continued as the linemen made their way over from the area where they have one-on-ones to the main field where they had 11-on-11 practice. Come on, Jalen Carter. Don't beat up Tyler Steen. It was reported, though, that Jalen Carter was then a monster the rest of the day. He had a tackle for loss on the first play of 11-on-11. After the scuffle, he later batted a pass and maybe had a sack when he penetrated through the line and went to the ground, but might have been able to grab Hurts ankles if we were allowed to touch the quarterback. He tackled Saquon Barkley for a short gain. Someone should just piss him off before every game. Tyler Steen pretty clearly isn't 100%. He went to the ground at one point during 11 on 11s and struggled to get back to his feet. He can no doubt see that his grasp on the starting right guard is slipping away to Makai Becton and maybe trying to play through an injury to prevent that. As for Jalen Hurts, it's been now 11 practices and he has yet to throw an interception. I'm telling you, he's about to ball out this year. Hurts threw a lot of short passes today with barely any hit in the ground. His slant game with A.J. Brown is firing on all cylinders. On one completed slant, A.J. Brown yelled, hell no to the defense, knowing they haven't been able to stop them all camp. Hurts did express some frustration after a fourth and goal play from the eight-yard line that resulted in an incomplete pass to Brown in the corner of the end zone. Brown called it, but he was out of bounds. Hurts screamed a naughty word after the play. From my vantage point, it looked like a good throw. Now, before we get to Saquon Barkley plus C.J. Garner-Johnson calling out Anaya Smith, yelling at him, and Quinion Mitchell locking up Devontae Smith, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Factor. Eat stress-free this summer with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. Choose from weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Also discover more than 60 add-ons every week like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and fuel up for your springtime goals. One of my favorite things about Factor is simply eliminate the hassle of prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. Simply heat and savor the good stuff. Plus, it's really flexible. I went to Virginia, paused my order, everything was good. When I came back, I got on my regularly scheduled program. You can add and subtract with ease. Head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use code PhillyMike50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off your next month of orders. That's code PhillyMike50 at Factor75.com to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month of orders. Link is in the description and the pinned comment section. Stop ordering out. Factor will get you right. I got mine. Go get yours. As for Saquon Barkley, he dominated running back linebacker one-on-one drills a few practices ago. But today, Zach Bond got the best of him twice. There was a very fun close to practice when Nick Sirianni and the coaching staff lined up some players for one-on-ones in front of the whole team. On one rep, rookie fifth-rounder wide receiver Anaya Smith faced off against undrafted rookie safety Andre Sam. Smith got no separation at all, but Tanner McKee still fit a pass into Smith in a spot where he could have made the catch anyways, but he couldn't bring it in. The defensive player then mobbed Sam with Chauncey Garner-Johnson yelling three times at the top of his lungs about Smith. He ain't done shit all camp. It just keeps getting worse and worse for Anaya Smith, but I'm not giving up on him yet. However, CJGJ saying, you ain't done shit all camp. I think it was still more of a friendly trash talk, but hey, you know CJ, no filter. But when someone talks trash and you know it's true, it kind of hits deeper. And he yelled it not just once, but three times. On the final rep during the end of practice one-on-ones, Johnny Wilson went against Quinya Mitchell, who tried to be physical with Johnny at the line of scrimmage. Wilson was able to beat Mitchell's press coverage and went deep. Will Greer floated a ball to give Wilson a chance to go up and get it, but Wilson didn't even need the added loft 
as he was able to get a step on Quinion Mitchell and made a catch downfield to end the day. The offense went crazy with Wilson. However, I did forget to say this. Jeff Kerr reported that Quinion Mitchell went against Devontae Smith three times, a wide receiver versus DB one-on-ones today, but early in practice, and Quinion won two of the three reps. Fangio got big plans for Quinion Mitchell, and he's not even sure where he wants to play him, slot or outside, because he's been doing good at both, but we might need him in slot. Listen. I thought he did well. Um, he played both nickel and outside corner. Um, he's a good player and he's going to be a good player. Uh, we just have to be careful not to overload his plate too much with because nickel is a full-time position as well as corner is. And he's having to learn both right now. And they're two drastically different positions. So we got to constantly monitor that to make sure he's capable of doing that. Is that something, is that, something that you would eventually want to pare down for him, kind of let him major in one instead of being at both? That would be ideal. It may not be practical. We may have to play him at nickel. As for the linebackers, he praised the crap out of Jeremiah Trotter Jr. And that could maybe lead into some more first-team reps in training camp. And we'll see how he does preseason game two and enjoying practice with the New England Patriots. Fangio talked about playing his starters more in preseason due to the fact that they're so new. Well, we're just so new on defense. You know, I think our offense is returning eight of their 11 starters, I believe. And although, you know, albeit Kellen's new, but most of the position coaches are the same on offense, whereas everything's new on defense, new players, new coaches, new scheme. You know, we need to play. Lastly, he talked about Zach Bond and how he played inside linebacker. But I just love the honesty. If you're good, you're good. If you make mistakes, he straight says it. He had a few plays where um, in New Orleans where the way they adjusted their defense, he would end up kind of looking like a ILB at times. Not a lot. And just from looking at those few plays, thought he had a chance to do it. And does he have those, those instincts? I, I, he does. I, I believe he does. He's had a good camp. His first few plays the other night, he, di he didn't play the correctly. But overall, he's had a good camp. With all that being said, I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Toll Podcast. Go get your factor. Click the link in the description and or the pinned comment section. You won't regret it. Do your boy a favor as well. Hit the like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss the videos. Plus, if you do all that and comment bleed green you get a chance to win a jersey of your choice leave your thoughts love hearing from you until next time you know what time it is we out